Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Wahawah Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahashai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much this lesson is going to be titled as Salvation is Only Given to the Israelites. The Israelites are the so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. That are dwelling on the earth. You are an Israelite according to the scriptures. And salvation is for us, our people. Which consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and American Indians. So Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. We're going to prove it in the scriptures. Because in the religion of Christianity, they push John 3.16. And John 3.16 is pertaining to the Israelites. People fail to realize that. John 3.16 is pertaining to the Israelites. Not every single person on the planet earth. And we're going to prove that in this lesson. Now the first scripture I'm going to get out is Revelation 14 and 1. Because Revelation 14 and 1 puts, you know, has a lot of truth and a lot of thought of receiving understanding because this is a future prophecy when the Lord Yahweh Shai comes back when he makes his second coming he's going to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel and 144,000 which consists of the Israelite men because 144,000 are all the elect men but you're going to have the elect that's under that as well not just you know, the 144,000, because you got a lot of people that go off on the scriptures when they think the 144,000 is just the elect and that's it. But no, you have the elect, which is the 144,000, which is all the elect men. And then you're going to have the elect that's under that. <coughs> Salakia. You're going to have the elect that's under that, which is the men, women, and children under that. So let's read this. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Revelation 14 and 1. It says, and this is the vision that John the Revelator had when he was on the island of Patmos. This is all the vision of which he saw when you read in Revelation. Revelation 14 and 1, and I, which is talking about Apostle John, I mean, uh, Apostle John, John the Revelator. Revelation 14 and 1, and I looked and lo, a lamb, see, which that lamb is talking about the Messiah. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That's that lamb. It says. And, and I looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount of Zion. So the Messiah. He's going to be at the top. Because when he comes back he's going to rule. And he's going to set his kingdom. On the planet earth. Yeah the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on the earth. And the Lord Yahweh Shai. He's going to be in charge of that. Of the kingdom of heaven. It says, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount of Zion and with him 144,000. The 144,000 is the elect men, which is going to be the cabinet of the kingdom of the government of Israel. It says, having his father's name written in their foreheads, right? Because the elect, they're going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the Lord. This is why the name is important because you got a lot of Israelites out there that's pushing to not make the Lord's name a doctrine but it's going to be important to know the name of the Lord because the elect is going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the Lord so this is why this is important here and we got a precept because we're going to prove in St. John 1 and 29 that that lamb that you read in Revelation 14 and 1 that's talking about the Messiah Revelation John 1 and 29 this is a precept for Revelation 14 and 1 to validate to prove that that lamb there is talking about the Messiah this is uh, John 1 and 29 next day 
John seeth Yahweh Shai. And John in this scripture is talking about John the Baptist. This is this is uh John 1 and 29. The next day John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High. See, so that lamb that you see when you read in Revelation 14 and 1, that's talking about the Messiah. It says, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away sins of the world. You see, in that word world there, this is why you got to understand the scriptures because you can get misinscrewed with the scriptures if you don't have the proper understanding on what is being said in the scripture. It's always good to go into the meaning of words because if you don't go into the meaning of words, you're going to get misinscrewed with the scriptures and you're not going to understand what is actually is stating in the scripture what is actually being said or stated in the scripture so when you go into the meaning of that word world there which you can do the same thing when you go to john 3 16 and this is why when you go into the greek word of john 3 16 it goes into cosmos which is g 2889 right strong's g 2889 cosmos cosmos which means an apt or harmonious agreement or constitution, order, or government. So that's pertaining to the Israelites. The elect of the nation of Israel are going to be the government of the kingdom of heaven. So this is talking about the Israelites and the Messiah. The Lord is going to save the elect. He's going to deliver his elect, which the elect is the nation of Israel. So that's who... John 3.16 is talking about the Israelites, which goes to Revelation 14 and 1. The elect, they're going to be the government of the kingdom of heaven. So when you read in the scriptures and you go into the meaning of that word world there, that's talking about the constitution or government. That's talking about the Israelites. So this scripture here is talking about Yahweh Shai and the Israelites. So that's who the Lord came back to save. This is who the Lord is coming back for when his second coming. So the Lord died for the Israelites, and when he make his second coming, he's going to come back for the Israelites. So now you should have an understanding when you read Revelation 14 and 1. And it says, Revelation 14 and 1, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on a mount of Zion. Talking about the Messiah being at the top, because he's going to be the rule. He's going to be ruling. The Lord is going to set his kingdom on the planet earth. Yahweh Shai is going to be in charge. He's going to destroy Esau's rulership, and he's going to set his rulership on the planet earth. But he has to destroy Esau's rulership first, so the Lord can establish his kingdom on the earth. So place, prophecies have to be fulfilled first before the Messiah can come. So this is why the Messiah hasn't came yet, because prophecies in the Old Testament have not all been fulfilled. You got prophecies in the scriptures that have not been fulfilled. Like Isaiah 34, that those prophecies haven't been fulfilled. Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, those prophecies have not been fulfilled yet. This is why the Messiah isn't here. This is why he hasn't make, made his second coming. Also in Revelation, there's prophecies that have not been fulfilled yet. So before the Messiah can come back, these prophecies have to be fulfilled. The hour of temptation that hasn't came yet. World War III, the global economic collapse. None of these things have taken place yet, but it's coming. Read again. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount of Zion with him 144,000 having his father's name written in his forehead. See, so this is why it's important to know the name of the Lord. And that's uh, Proverbs 18 and 10 right this is why it's important to know the name of the lord the elect is going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the lord proverbs 18 and 10 the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous running into it and is safe see so the elect of the nation of israel they're going to be delivered and they're going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the lord and we're going to prove that when you read revelation 7 when you read revelation 7 and 3 to verse 4 it shows you that who salvation is for. Because when the Lord comes back, he's not saving every single person on the earth. Everybody's not going to be saved. And just because you're a Hebrew Israelite, that doesn't mean that you're going to be saved either. The Lord is only going to save the elect. Not all Israel is going to be saved. And not every single person on the earth is going to be saved. Only the remnant of the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be saved. And that's why we're hoping to be that number. We're hoping to earn our spot. This is why we are consistently... Um, being obsessed with this truth and being embedded and staying focused on Yahweh Bashi Mashai to the best of our ability 
doing our part in this thing, being a governed body, being a vessel used under Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Revelation 7 and 3, it says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. See, so the elect, they're going to be sealed, right? <clears throat> Verse 4, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. See, they're going to be sealed, which goes to Ezekiel 9 and 4. It says, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So this isn't talking about believers. This is talking about the actual 12 tribes of the nation of Israel that's going to be sealed. They're going to be delivered. So when the Lord comes back, he's going to gather his elect from off the four winds. That's a future prophecy. So not every single Israelite is going to be saved. Two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed according to prophecy. So now you know when you read in the scriptures who salvation is for. Again, not every single person of the world is going to be saved. Because that contradicts the scriptures. Especially when you read Zechariah 13 and 8. So you can you got to explain Zechariah 13 and 8. In that case, if everybody's going to be saved, then what is Zechariah 13 and 8 talking about? Because Zechariah 13 and 8 says that two-thirds therein shall be cut off and die, meaning two-thirds of our people, they're going to be they're going to be left here to be destroyed, as well as these heathen nations. And the elect is going to be left therein, meaning the elect, they're going to be delivered. But two-thirds of our people, they're going to be destroyed on this end. And then they're going to be brought back through the elect. The two-thirds that die on this end, they're going to be brought back in the kingdom, but they're going to be brought back through the elect. So again, not every single Israelite is going to be saved and not every single person of the world is going to be saved. But salvation is mainly for the Israelites. That's who salvation is for. A remnant is going to be saved though. This is uh, Psalms 147 and verse 19. And it says, he showed off his word unto Jacob. Talking about the Israelites. He show, it says, he showed off his word unto Jacob and his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. See? So that's who the Lord is dealing with. He's not dealing with every single person of the earth. Verse, verse 20, it says, He have not dealt so with any nation. See, so the Lord isn't dealing with everybody. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. Right? It says, He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. See, so not every single Israelite on the earth is going to be saved. Not every single Israelite is going to be saved. And not every single person of the world is going to be saved. Only the elect is going to be saved. Which we're hoping to be. We're hoping to be of that number. We're hoping to be the elect. Alright. We're the hopeful elect. But mainly in this lesson I'm going to talk about is salvation is for Israel. You know, salvation is for the Israelites. That's who the only people that is granted salvation. Not every single person of the world. Alright. So salvation is only given to the Israelites. Amos 3 and 1. It says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. See, he didn't say everybody. It said, O children of Israel, the Israelites. It says, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So we're going through a temporal punishment. So it's letting you know in the scripture who the Lord is dealing with. He's not dealing with everybody. He's only dealing with the Israelites. Deuteronomy I think it's uh, 32 and verse 8. Because this is a proof that salvation is only for the Israelites and the Lord is only dealing with the Israelites. He's not dealing with everybody. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, right? Because the Lord created 18 nations, but he's not dealing with all the 18 nations. He's only dealing with one specific nation out of the 18, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, which make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So the Lord created 18 nations, but he's not dealing with all 18 nations. He's only dealing with one specific nation out of the 18, which are the Israelites, which consists of the 12 tribes, which makes up of the 12 tribes. And you got the rest of the 17 heathen nations that the Lord isn't dealing with because the Lord isn't dealing with these 17 heathen nations. Yes, he created them, but the Lord isn't dealing with them, though. Verse 32, it says, verse 8, when the Most High have, when the Most High divided the nations their inheritance. So the Lord gave all the nations their own inhabitants of land, right? It says, when he separated the sons of Adam, right? Because you got people that say, oh, we all came from Adam. You're totally correct. We all did come from Adam. 
But guess what? The sons of Adam were wicked. So the Lord separated the nations because the sons of Adam were wicked. Right? And he set the bonds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. See? Which goes to the sons of God. Because you have the you have the sons of you have the sons of the most high, the sons of God, the sons of men, and the sons of the wicked. Now the sons of God are the Israelites. The sons of men are the other nations, and the sons of the wicked are the heath are the Edomites. Right? Which the Edomites are you so called white people. You guys are the sons of the wicked. And then you have the sons of men, which are the other nations, and you have the sons of God, which are the Israelites. And that's who we are. We're the children of the Most High. Right? The children of Israel. So the Lord segregated the nations and he said, and he said his bonds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel, the Israelites, started from Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on down. Verse 9, it says, For the Lord's portion is his people. See? So that's who the Lord is dealing with. The Israelites, Jacob. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So there you go. He's not dealing with every single person on the earth. All right. And if you're using Galatians 3.28, that's talking about the Israelites. Because that word Greek there, that's talking about the Israelites that were for, that were uh, Hellenized. The Israelite foreigners. Because they were in they were uh Hellenized under the uh Greek rule, going back to the uh the Greek Empire under the Seleucid rule, right? During the year uh six uh the year 164 to 175 BC under the Antiochs, right? Antiochus the first, the second, the third, the fourth epiphanies. And the one that did the more the most affliction upon the Israelites was Antiochus the fourth epiphanies. When you read in the scriptures under the during the Seleucid rule, right? You had the Antiochs, Antiochus the first, the second, the third, the fourth epiphanies. And you can use Romans 1 and 16. That's also pertaining to the Israelites there. Because you had Israelites that were Hellenized under the Seleucid rule. And you can look that up. And uh, let me get one more precept out. This is uh, John 4 and 22. Because this is what the Messiah said unto the Samaritan woman. And the Samaritan woman was an Israelite as well. So she also was an Israelite. This is uh, John 4 and 21. It says, Yahweh shall say unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. See, so there you go. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. All right? Not every single person has salvation. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Matthew 1 and 21, and this is to prove that salvation is given to the Israelites. This is Matthew 1 and 21. It says, and she shall bring forth a son, talking about Miriam, which is Mary, the mother of the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, which that's his true name. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. It says Jesus there, but Jesus is not the true name of the Messiah. It's Yahweh Shai. Which goes to H, which is the Hebrew grammar of H3091, which is Yahweh Shai. It says, for he shall save his people from their sins. So the Messiah, he died for the Israelites, right? So we can be able to get our second shot back to the Father because we broke the old covenant. So now we're under a temporal grace. But when our Lord comes back to make his second coming, he's going to save the elect of the nation of Israel. He's going to come back and he's going to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel when he make his second coming. He's not coming back to save every single person. And we're going to prove that because we can even go to Genesis, the 49th chapter, right? And we can start at, uh, um, get to the main point, Genesis 49 and 10. It says the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Shiloh is talking about the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. See, so the Lord is going to gather his elect, right? The Lord is going to gather his elect. It mentions that, the gathering of the elect from the four winds. And I'll get that out real quick. Matthew 24 and 31. It says that he, talking about the Messiah, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven even unto the other. This is a future prophecy where the Lord is going to send his angels to gather his elect. And they're going to be gathered from the four winds. And they're going to be sealed. 
right? Which we read in Revelation 73 through verse uh, 4. And it goes into the elect, be each tribe being sealed, right? 144,000 out of each tribe. That's talking about the elect men, but you're also going to have the elect under that and men, women, and children under that. So we're not going to keep this long. Just wanted to do a lesson on this and to prove to you that Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.